Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Ms. Honey Drop. I will be talking about the importance of uh, shadow work before your initiation gets done. But before I go into it, let's see how is everyone doing. I hope this video meets you well. It's been a minute, I haven't filmed, so yeah, it's good to be back <laughs> filming today. If you're a returning viewer, welcome to my channel. And if this is your first time, welcome to my channel as well. Make sure you subscribe and like the video and share it with your loved ones before you disappear. Right, let's get into it. What in God's name is shadow work? You'll be wondering that is if you have not heard the word before. Okay shadow work or shadow aspect to put it simple is the dark side to us when i say us i mean every single human being has got it even those who act like saints they've got a dark side to them even psychology proves that we all have a side to us that we want to repress the side we don't want to show the side we want to hide from the society, from our loved ones, even from ourselves sometimes. I mean, uh, there's a quote, in the, sorry, it's not a quote, it's actually a scripture that says, uh, the heart of man is desperately wicked, who can see it, who can know it. I can't remember how it goes, but the point is, there is a side to you that you yourself doesn't even know yet. I mean getting to know you for you is so important and also not just knowing who you are but healing aspect of you that has been damaged by virtue of the things you've gone through in your life or just societal mess in general you know and then the thing is the the, the unconscious mind it, it has a lot of strong um, impact on forming who we are, our emotions, our behavior, um, you know, everything, our thoughts. It's, it's what helps us rea react or respond in a certain way. You'd find that certain people would uh, yell at someone and on a normal day, someone was like, I've never seen him act like that before. Like, yeah, because the side to him that it never shows comes out to play sometimes. And this is why you need to keep it on the leash. But rather than keep it on the leash, I would prefer to modify it, to reshape it, to be best suited for your own personal gain and also the people in your life. So now that we've been able to explain what shadow means, shadow work, means or your shadow side means what is shadow work now shadow work is working on yourself first sorry i take that back yeah well i'm correct but <laughs> knowing yourself and then working on yourself that's what i was gonna say if you don't even know who you are how are you going to work on being a better version of yourself you know so it is so important to sit down and find out aspects of you that you didn't even know existed before what are the triggers for the way you respond to certain situations uh, what are the traumas you've experienced that you need to heal from and um, how do you go about rewriting the old <laughs> um, makeup of who you are well you can't completely change yourself and that's why i used the word modify initially you can reshape in yourself a bit you can modify your character your behavior your response your reaction and everything now get this because the unconscious mind is so powerful and it stores up so much information that we are not even aware of like i said before it's what, like I said, forms our behavior. And it can, I feel like I'm repeating myself like a broken record. But I'm, get, I'm getting somewhere. These behavioral patterns can make you either very 
uh, docile in nature and obsequious or you can be very brash volatile aggressive um, bossy all this kind of stuff so it has a lot of impact on who we are all some people are just outright cold they just don't care they just cold stone almost emotionless I believe there's a um, there's a there's a psychological diagnosis for certain people who, are, who don't have emotions it's, i think it's called et or eq i can't remember um but it's a thing it's a thing there are people who just don't have emotion and they don't know how to respond or react in certain cases but it's not that they don't have it is that they've made it so dead it's almost hard to wake it up and the way you can come to wake this side to you up or change all the other aspects in general is going into your subconscious mind working on things that has happened in the past in fact it can go as far back as past life healing healing from things that has happened in a previous life that you've lived before i personally believe in reincarnation but hey i'm not here to force my idea on you if you do not believe it perfect but i do so for those like me who believe in a past life going into your subconscious mind can help you heal um from past life pain trauma and these are the parts uh, this is how you gradually work on yourself your shadow self you start to find out why do i behave the way i do what is the trigger why do i respond to situations like this what are the things I went through growing up, childhood, had, uh, teenage years or teenagehood, adulthood, early adulthood, thereabout, um, depending on what your age is presently. So these are, you, you start finding out this, the things that has happened, events from the past that has had so much impact on you to make you act out in a certain way or just not act at all. Maybe you're just nonchalant. There is a reason for everything. Things just don't happen. Now, with that being said, a lot of people are not ready to do the work because it's tough. It's really difficult. But not doing the work also affects you when you go into initiation because I feel like many people think once you do your initiation, it's just like when waving a magical wand and all your life problems just switch you just become zen overnight it doesn't work that way and orishas are not going to help you heal from your shadow aspect yes i said what i said if anything at all if there is any category of entity that would help you Heal from your shadow work or your shadow, sorry, go for your shadow work and heal from your shadow aspect. I'll say it's the ancestors because they have you, they carry your bloodline. You have their genetics, their DNA within you. They can guide you to know the certain mistakes that they made in their lifetime so that the patterns doesn't repeat itself again. You literally put a stop to continual circle or trauma or patterns and behavioral uh, you know, sequence in a family. As you heal yourself, you heal your womb or your, you know, the masculine side to you. But yeah, it's not just womb, women alone. Men carry trauma, women carry trauma. And it, when you come together and form a child, it's passes on through epigenetics and all that kind of stuff i spoke about it in an um, i mentioned it in my ancestor video so go look for my channel and you'll see it so when you heal from it it reduces the amount of trauma that is passed on to your children so that way you're stopping some repeated history from carrying on so if anything your ancestors would be your best bet to help you heal from uh, trauma to help you go through your your shadow work the dark night of the soul to better put 
Orishas are not going to help you heal overnight. They, they don't. Initiation is not going to change who you are. You're not going to become Zen overnight. If you're an aggressive person, you carry on, carry on being aggressive even after you get initiated. If you're a very docile person who people just walk all over, you've turned yourself into a carpet. Well, it will carry on. If you're someone who, who has insecurities, who has abandonment issues, I'm still going to make a video on that one actually. Um, it's not all going to change overnight. So it's important that you walk through this before you go. In fact, doing your shadow work before getting initiated allows you to be ready for the kind of power that is being handed over to you, transferred to you. Am I making sense? He allows you to be able to carry it properly and be able to execute the work that Orishas are now going to ask you to do or if I in this case, you know. But when you haven't gone through it, sometimes you... Uh, how do I put it? I don't want to say damaging, but it would affect your efficiency the efficacy of the assignments that you've been given healing from your past trauma is not the purview is not within the purview of the orishas is not what they're there for they can help you they can guide you but you have to do the work you can ask for their help but you still have to do the work yourself ancestors can also guide you but they're not going to do it for you so you need to do the work yourself and the more you heal your your trauma your your pain every whatever the thing you've gone through and moving on from it cutting etheric cords you know just doing a lot of, it's a lot it's a whole lot of process but the more you do it the more you help yourself you make yourself ready for what you're being called to you also stop traumas from passing on to the next generation so it has a lot of benefits it is really really important to have it done before getting initiated i mean that's just my take on it but you can take my word with a pinch of salt and just throw it in the garbage that would do <laughs> but i do know a lot of people who are in very high ranking positions and they still have insecurity, feeling like someone who is not even up to them is a threat in a way. And I can't understand it. I like my brain just can't comprehend it. Like how? Nigga, your eye up there, what more do you want? <laughs> I don't know. So this is why it's important. You're looking over your shoulder. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that. Things are not going to happen in life that would, um, um, what's the word? Mess up your trust. But doing your shadow work puts you in a place where you are more grounded. You're more sure of yourself. You're not threatened by anyone. When you're due, I won't tell you for life, Farah Kora. The sky is broad, is big enough for birds to fly and not even get entangled together in their wings or anything like that they're not there's not going to be any head-on collusion with birds because the sky is massive and i believe the earth too is but people just unnecessarily get worried troubled by issues that are not even issues they act out they 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 are uh, promiscuous they abuse their position <laughs> Of course you would with a lot of power comes a lot of responsibility and a lot of people don't know how to wield the power if you do not curb your bad habits you're going to start misbehaving because now you've been given something so authentic and so powerful so much authority and you have the willpower to do whatever you want with it well not do whatever you want because you still have to answer to the wishes knowing that you cannot misuse your power but some people still do not because they want to but because their their um lack of discipline overrides humanity overrides 
who they are overrides good character it overrides the work belly which is what if i calls us to to show in our everyday life anyway without wasting too much of our times i'm just gonna go straight into the benefits of what doing your shadow work can do for you now doing shadow work it brings about great awakening of you of yourself you go through a major awakening a whole lot of shifts um you get to see things you never saw about yourself before you open your third eye even in most cases because trauma uh, can also block us from from having dreams or sorry from remembering dreams because we are always dreaming anyway it's just a case of people forgetting and assuming that no i don't i don't dream no you do awakening of changing your thoughts pattern your shifting your perspective the way you approach matter the way you see things in life the way you the way you say uh, say certain things the way you judge people or not judge people it's a whole lot of shifts that will happen for you it's going to change many things that was hindering you as well i mean it you can't put a prize in it you know and then number two it helps you go through a lot of breakthrough and breaking free honestly by the time you go through a whole lot of decluttering process healing from trauma you feel like a brand new person you honestly feel like a brand new person because you just find that there are some things that you never thought you could stop doing that you actually stop doing effortlessly that was a more need, much needed see so as i was saying it helps you break free from your own bondage because uh, we can put it like um, a eight of swords type situation where you put yourself in a self-inflicted uh, restriction, imprisonment and all, all that kind of stuff. So you break free and you have major breakthrough in different aspects of your life. Then creativity. You become more creative. You see life in a different way. You see colors where there was darkness you see beauty where everything looked very ugly and bleak and lifeless everything just comes alive to you you break free from addiction i mean when you go through a lot of decluttering and healing and everything like that the things that you never even thought about will start coming to you your mind opens up not just that your third eye is opening up and you are more sensitive and more receptive in terms of um, your your spirit your aura but you become more aware you have new ideas you see things clearly you communicate clearly you you start to take your power back things you never thought you could people you never thought you could confront you really call out their BS and put them where they should be. Like, listen, sit your ass down. Don't talk to me like that if you're a docile person. And if you're someone who has always been aggressive, you learn to approach matters calmly rather than nagging your way through life or going into a situation like a bull in a china shop. It is not going to always work. Like they say, emotions win argument, but emotions don't win war. So if you want to go through life winning, you have to really change a lot of things about yourself. Number four, it allows you to overcome self-limiting beliefs. Where you think, uh, I'm not good enough, I'm not pretty enough. You know, you overcome uh, all this body shaming. It's a whole lot of things. It's not even just one thing. I can go into tons and tons of things that it's advantageous to you going through this. Your self-confidence improves. It increases. You realize that things you never even thought in a million years that you could achieve 
will become less effort achievable. You literally put in a little effort for flipping exit. That pipe. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, I, I can't help myself. I, I, I don't like noise. I'm very finicky like that. So you, you start helping yourself to come out of self-limiting beliefs. Things that you thought, oh no, it's not achievable. It's not... Mm. You just change your own, own mindset, your own perspective, your own approach to life in general, you know. Um, there's one more. Yes. So, over, getting to know who you are. Once you overcome all the self-limiting beliefs, you get to know who you are for you. You find out that oh, there's a new side to me that I never even knew existed. You just start loving other aspects to you. You start realizing that, oh, I'm not always just straight. Maybe I'm a little bended. Maybe I'm a little, you know, curved out. Maybe I'm round shaped. Maybe I'm square. Maybe I'm a triangle. It's not always straight. It's not always black and white. You just get to know that there's another side to you and you love it. You literally fall in love with another part of yourself that you didn't know before. So it is very important. But like I said, initiation being the main aim of this discourse. Coming into initiation, healed, helps you move ahead in life. And also, it takes away the delays in so many areas of your life. Because trauma and self-limiting beliefs hold us back from progressing. Because you keep saying, I can't, where you should say, I can. And until you change your mindset and say, I can't do this. You would not be able to do a lot of things. You keep blocking your own self from moving ahead in life, from moving forward. So it's really great to work on that side to you before doing your initiation. So I'll round off with this and just say that I love you guys. Please, I beg of you, do your best to go through the dark night of the soul with your full chest heal from things that are limiting you from progressing in life that are holding you back from achieving things you should um heal from things that would make you um act out when you've been given a certain responsibility and power to back it up as well don't let your own weakness cause your fall because i've seen that happen to quite a lot of people um things that they could have just dealt with before coming it's kind of like what you call what you can say um the back room job the backstage of your life before you are presented on the stage you don't want to go on the stage and mess up you really want to go all all out when you're ready and know that you're you you know what you're doing you don't want to get on the stage and start to stutter and forget your lines if you're making a presentation or you're doing a drama for instance something along those lines i'm just using that as an example for you to see where, where i'm going with this so do the work in the backstage now so that when you're put in the forefront on the stage for the world to look at you will not embarrass yourself. Have a ball, blessed day. What was that? <laughs> Have a phenomenal time. And make sure to come back on my channel. And I'll see you another day. Take care of yourself. And goodbye. Oh, wow. Bless myself.